boys and girls. It is a glorious day and I am off to Snowdonia. This is going to be part two of my using OS Maps film. Uh, we're going to head up to Cadridris today. We're going to take a walk up the Minforth path, uh, take a look at the lay of the land up there, see how it compares to the OS Maps that we had a look at in part one. Uh, if you haven't seen part one, I'd suggest you pause this video right now head over there and have a look at part one. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Um, well worth having a look at that uh, before you watch this video, just so that you understand what I'm talking about when we get there. So welcome to Wild Astro. Uh, on this channel, we do wild camping, related gear reviews, and even some astrophotography, which I think I'm gonna get done tonight because the forecast is absolutely beautiful for a very, very clear starry night. Um, and for the location I'm going, should have fantastic dark skies as well. So, uh, really looking forward to tonight. It does mean I'm carrying the full whack, 21 and a bit kilo backpack today, but um, it'll be worth it if we get some great photos tonight. I will speak to you again when we reach the car park at the bottom of the Minforth Path. This is Wild Astro. Okay, boys and girls, here is our OS map of Kader Idris. So I'm gonna run you through this very, very quickly. At the moment, I'm parked here, Minforth, bottom of the Minforth path. Okay, we're gonna make our way along here onto the Minforth path itself, which is this dotted green path up here. Now you'll see just here, it's quite steep through the forest here, or I'm expecting it to be. And then I'm looking at it leveling out a little bit as it sort of starts to follow the contour lines a bit more here. And then as we bear left here, it's gonna get a little bit steeper again before it levels out a bit more up onto the plateau in front of Lynn Cow. All right, we're gonna head there first and then we'll have a look up the path here to have a look at this south facing slope that we think we identified on the map before. Um, but primarily this is where we're shooting for this sort of area here to see if we can find somewhere to put the tent for the night. So here we are on the Minforth path. I love snow, don't you? There's something about seeing those hills appearing on the horizon. Everything melts away. Could have had the crappiest day, the crappiest week, the crappiest month. I arrive here, it's my happy place. Only thing I've forgotten today is a hat. I'll be in the trees in a moment, so it'll be nice and shaded, but I do like to walk with something to stop me sweating into my eyes. Ah oh well. Wow. 
the map was right, it's steep. There's some water coming down that today. Fantastic. I'm really feeling this bag. My last couple of times out, I've only been carrying 14, 15 kg. I think once even as low as 12. So 21. Whoa. Yeah, feeling that in the glutes. Wouldn't have been a problem five years ago. I used to be a road cyclist. 2014, I did John and Groats to Land's End in eight days. It's about 120 miles a day. Oh, oh, I was fit. Legs like a couple of steel bars and the bum like a peach. Not so much now. Woo. Okay, glasses have been lost and I'm deploying the sweat rack oh. it's a full time job once I start sweating alright this is an incredible walk fantastic climb but I'm going to speed it up for you guys doesn't get much better than that.
Okay, boys and girls. So here's the Minford path. There's me. And I don't know how well you can see this because of the sun. I'll try to get a good angle. But just up here, you can start to see the basin that houses Lynn Cow. So we're nearly there. However, Snowdonia does not disappoint. Here is Lynn Cow. And look at this. The map is good, but it certainly doesn't do justice to this incredible landscape. Not only have I got some fantastic looking camping spots, I've got an amazing choice as well. I'm not first here. Some tents up just down there already. A bit early to have the tents up, lads. Or lasses. It's not even five o'clock yet. Arrive late, leave early. That's what we should be doing. Look at what I'm going to be camping under. Oh! Spectacular. I think I'm going to go over there. Possibly up on that little ridge. We'll see. We'll see in a minute. And here we are, boys and girls. I've chosen a spot. Uh, I'll show you around. I'm just by the lake. The water is so stunningly clear. There's, I've seen one or two little fishies in there. I am so tempted, so tempted to get in that water. I may do later. I've got a towel, so why not? Here's my pitch. Here. Believe it or not, it doesn't look, look like it on the camera, but that, that area there is just big enough and flat enough for the Lanshan too. Uh, so I'm gonna be uh, popping the tent up once the sun dips below the, uh, dips below the ridge up there. Uh, it's gonna drop cool quite quickly, but the wind is gonna drop. There's a little bit of a, little bit of a wind from the east at the moment. Uh, this is where we came from, over here. Um, Lovely story, that, that ridge just there, just over it, um, facing in a southerly direction, was where I was uh, when I decided to, to start wild camping. I was sat up there about midnight, uh, photographing the Milky Way, and uh, I thought, wow, I need to be able to stay up here to do this properly. I don't know if you can make them out, there's the wind, uh, the wind farm right on the horizon up there. I'll try and hold it still enough for you to see. I don't think you can make them out, but maybe, maybe. I'd love to do a time lapse of the sky, but the, the clouds just aren't moving at the moment. What a place. I absolutely adore it here. Happy, happy, happy. Okay guys and girls, let's talk tents. I've got the Lanshan 2 today. I'm gonna to put that up now. Um, hopefully, you're gonna be able to see me doing that. I could possibly do with a higher vantage point though. Hang on a minute. That's better. Right, let's get the Lanshan 2 up. As you can see, I've compressed it down this is the uh, Sea to Summit uh, Ultra Sill compression sack, uh, size small. Um, you can see, smaller than a football, okay, pretty small. You can fit the Lanshan 2 into the extra small, um, but I've got my sleeping bag in that at the moment, so I'll show you how small it can go. 
um, but this is where I've got it at the moment. I might get another extra small for it, but we'll see. Do you know what? You don't need to see this in real time. I'm gonna put this on some time lapse. Okay, one of the mistakes I made with this tent uh, when I pitched it on my little trip with Dave outdoors was this ridge line, I, I let it sag down. Um, I think, I don't know whether I put the ridge, uh, the poles too long or what, but uh, either way, it, it didn't really work very well. Um, and a little bit of adjusting to do around this side, uh, see if I can do something about that, uh, that crease coming down the door there. Um, but basically, I've got no kinks no ripples on the end walls um, little piece of advice when you when you're um, tightening a, a tent like this if you've got um, if you've got ripples moving in this direction diagonally you want to tighten that corner there if they're obviously if they're moving in this direction you want to tighten this corner down here okay um, I'm just gonna have a little play and see if I can sort out the little ripples on this end wall here um, and I'll be back with you in a moment. That's the, the little river leaving the leaving the lake there. Look at this. If it weren't for that tiny ripple, you wouldn't even know the water was there. So we're definitely losing the sun over the ridge now. There it goes. But what that means is the moon, I think, will put in an appearance over that ridge line just there. I'm not sure what time yet. I'm going to have to check on the time, figure that one out. But um, back to things at hand. There's the sleeping bag. That's the extra small size um, Sea to Summit waterproof sack there it's very very impressive bit of kit you can really really ratchet it down uh, hard and that is i mean that's that's hard that's you know um and that's my that's my uh three season down van gogh venom uh 300 in there um which for the temperature it's going to go down to tonight about five six degrees um it's going to be at its comfort limit as far as I'm concerned uh, I'm quite a cold sleeper I do wake up uh, but it's still a pretty good sleeping bag I've been very impressed with it so far and uh, hopefully continue to be so I've just spotted a group of people heading up the next leg of the Minford, Minforth path there they go so the path goes up there, continues up that little traverse there, and then up onto the ridge line, which eventually takes you up to the summit of Cader Idris. And that's the path that I was going to go and have a look up, because over the other side of that ridge line is that south facing slope we talked about in the first video. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay here, uh, get camp set up, get some food on, get a drink, uh, set up the camera gear, uh, talk to you a bit about the camera gear because I realised I haven't had a chance to do that so far in any films. Um, and I've got quite a lot with me. Um, the skies are exactly as the forecast promised. They're uh, very, very partly cloudy, but they're clearing. Clearing. Look at this. Above we are looking absolutely beautiful. There is gonna be a full moon tonight, but I'm hoping the full moon disappears behind, uh, behind here um, at some point, uh, fairly early on in the night. It's gonna it's going to appear from behind here, and it's gonna disappear, it's gonna go around that way. Uh, I can't get my finger in the right place. It's gonna go around that way and disappear behind that, I hope. Um, depends how high it gets in the sky. I'm gonna check that in a minute with the, with the app but uh, we will find out. Uh, the midges have started arriving. <sighs> the only downside to an otherwise perfect place. Well, there's my camp, folks. I'm starting to get the camera gear set up. I'm sorry to say, 
I found something down here that has upset me a bit. Someone has obviously been here and quite recently by the smell of it. Don't worry, it's not <laughs> We've got a fire pit that hasn't been dealt with. Partially burnt firewood, but look. Wayfarer meal bag. We've got some griddles left there from a throwaway barbecue. It smelled, the, the, the smell of ash is still fairly fresh here. And then over here, I'm sorry. That's, that's tissue in there, folks. And I don't even want to think about what's under it. This is unacceptable. I try not to lose my temper. If you were up Cader Idris and this is you, you're a disgrace. This is not on, it absolutely boils my piss. I will collect up what I can safely and hygienically in the morning and take it off the mountain with me. But seriously, if this is you, if this is, if this is what you, you do and what you think is acceptable, no, just no. Ugh. Right, rant over. Let's get back to setting up. Okay, I'm going to talk to you briefly about one or two bits of uh, my camera equipment as I set up here, okay? So, um, the tripod is a Benro, okay? It's, it's quite heavy. Um, it's a lot heavier than I'd like to be carrying, but it's, it's a Benro Mark III. It's the TMA37C. Um, if you want to see a full review on that tripod, have a look at Alan Wallace's um, YouTube channel, um, A-L-Y-N uh, Wallace. Um, he's brilliant. He is an absolute don as far as the UK is concerned on all things astrophotography. Um, take a look at his channel. He is absolutely incredible. You won't be disappointed. Um, down there, that's just a bag of rocks. That's just to add some extra stability and weight to the, to the tripod so it doesn't shake at all. Um, on top here is the first bit of equipment that I want to talk to you about. This is a Sky Watcher Star Adventurer. Okay, now um, it's a little bit complicated, and if you don't know what um, if you don't know what a star tracker does or is for, I'd suggest you sort of look it up if it's something you'd be interested in doing. Um, essentially, um, a a star photograph requires a long shutter speed. Uh, a long shutter time, um, meaning that a lot of light has to come in uh, to the uh, to the camera in order to pick up even the tiniest little stars and nebulae and, and all the rest of the, the, the bits and pieces that are up there that you can't see with the naked eye. Um, the longer a shutter is open for, the more chance there is of things moving. And if the shutter is open for sort of 30 seconds, 40 seconds, a minute, two minutes, then actually the stars move and they're not points of light anymore, they become little lines. What a star tracker does is it moves the camera at the same speed that the stars are moving. Okay, so um, the camera doesn't perceive the stars movement, it just takes in the light and the stars continue to look like a point of light. Okay, now it's, it's quite a precision bit of kit, it's very, very um, precise in its movements uh, and when I've got the camera on there I'll talk to you a bit more about that setup okay but you'll see on the dial here all I'm going to use today is this star setting here okay and as soon as I turn it to there the light comes on and it starts turning at the speed that the stars rotate okay it has to be pointed north which is that way up over that ridge there and I will align it precisely once I can see the north star that's what we use to align that okay um, if you do want to look at exactly how these work um, there are a few reviews of them and uh, how to um, videos on YouTube well worth looking up they're a fantastic bit of kit not as expensive as you might think and um, you can pick one of these up for sort of well under 300 pound um, but uh, yeah, if it's something that you might be interested in doing, um, start off with just a camera, see how you get on first. I sort of progressed onto this um, quite quickly because I wanted to start getting much longer uh, exposures, but uh, I'll talk to you a bit more about it later. 
There's the Pocket Rocket Deluxe doing its thing. And I'm a creature of habit. Summit to eat have come along for the trip again. Thank you very much. Coffee's going to be on soon. And uh, with some additions. The wind has dropped really beautifully. It is a gorgeous evening. There goes the sun. Lightest of ease, come dancing on the wind. Will you take a chance and look inside? Where well, there's nowhere to hide. If I take your hands on the cold Christmas Eve, will you follow me outside? We could dance just like the stars. No one could tear this apart. Let the snow fall and leave the bells to chime I hope you'll be waiting cause I'm coming home tonight Oh it's stunning, absolutely stunning up here tonight What absolutely incredible geography, look at that the camera just doesn't do it justice. It is epic. Sorry. I do like to wax lyrical about these things. It's the artist in me. Hey folks. Right, I've been checking um, an app called Photo Pills for the moon's path and trajectory tonight. Um, it's projected to pop up over the horizon at about seven minutes to eight tonight, okay, which is in just under an hour's time. Unfortunately, once he's up, he's not going anywhere. So once the moon is up, the sky is going to be pretty bright um, for astrophotography. But I'll I will give it a go. I'll give it a go. But I am going to try and get a really nice moonrise over the horizon there. I'll just turn you around and show you where that's going to be. So, I did think he was going to come up just on that, uh, on that ridge there. Where he's actually going to come up is right over the windmills over there. And he's going to follow this ridge line up. It's going to be quite cool, actually. Um, but once he's up, as I say, he is, he is up and he's staying. Um, so it's going to be a bright night. It's full moon. You'll be waiting cause I'm coming home tonight I hope you'll Okay boys and girls, uh, I'm trying not to blind myself here, my night vision is already ruined um, But uh, I wanted to, uh, to bring you and show you the setup, the camera setup I'm going to be using tonight Okay so let me just turn you around, I'll show you what I've got so I've already shown you the star tracker. Here's the camera. It's a Canon, Canon EOS 600D. Okay. The lens I've got for tonight. I struggle to remember this for some for some reason. It's a, it's an old Sigma. Um, there it is. Okay, and it's a 24 millimeter lens. I beg your pardon, it's a 20 millimeter lens. I've left the 24 at home. So it's a 20 millimeter Sigma F1.8. So I've got a nice fast, fast aperture, nice wide fast aperture. All right, and it lets tons and tons of light in. It's a great lens. It's actually a better lens than the camera really um, justifies, to be quite honest with you. My biggest problem tonight is none of the gear at all. The gear is fine and everything's ready and everything's working. And I'm, I can see the North Star, so I have aligned the, the star tracker now. My biggest problem at the moment is this fella over here. He is bright. 
and there's going to be it's going to be quite difficult to get everything just right um with the balance and and, and hopefully get some stars but i am going to have in that direction there away from the moon the, the northern end of the milky way so fingers crossed um, if anything does come out worth showing you tonight i'm going to pop it across the screen now Okay, boys and girls, um, relatively happy with what we've achieved tonight. Um, yeah, I think I got some, some decent stuff. Uh, I'll have a little bit of a play, a bit of an edit, and uh, hopefully you've just seen that. Um, time for me to turn in. I will see you in the morning. Night-night, folks. Good morning, everyone. Pretty good night of sleep. It's chilly. Low single figures, I would have guessed. Five, six degrees, something like that. Um, the orange glow on my face is not my torch. It's actually this gorgeous sky in the east. I'll just turn you around and show you that. Looks like we're in for a really, really pretty sunrise, so... I'm going to get a time lapse going. I'm going to get a coffee on. And uh, I'm going to lie here and watch it. Morning, everyone. <laughs> Unfortunately, a couple of things that are going to leave a slightly bitter taste in the mouth. It's half past eight now, and as you can see, there's a group that arrived very late last night making a racket, shouting across the field to everyone they could see with torches on. They've still got a fire going. Frankly, whatever time of day it is, sorry, this is a nature reserve. You don't light a fire here. And then secondly, I've got to go back down here and collect up all this. And if you watch this and can't figure out why this is a problem, if you're looking at this and thinking, oh, it's only a bit of litter, it's only a fire pit. Right. That there is not biodegradable. Some animal could come along, take a mouthful of that, or even swallow the whole thing, choke to death. If that animal dies near the water source, it pollutes the water source. And people downstream who are using it as a water source for drinking are in the firing line for getting very, very ill. Number two, a fire pit like that and fire logs left behind like that, okay? Let's just start with this little spot here. That spot there will take 10 years, 10 years until it's back to the way it was before these idiots arrived. Okay, and then finally, these things left behind here. These have got sharp edges. What this is, folks, 
is one of the grills off the top of a throwaway barbecue that's been folded up and left. Look at the sharp edges on that. Okay, some sheep or badger or other animal comes along, picks that up. Oh my God, there's glass there as well. All of the coals, the used coals from the barbecue have been scattered all up here as well. Thrown up under that rock. What an absolute disgrace. And if you're watching this thinking, what's the big problem? You're the problem. Right, I'm not touching the tissue that's got the brown stains and is potentially hiding something underneath. I'm going to hope and pray that that is going to biodegrade. But I've done everything that I reasonably can. I'm going to finish picking up my last little bits here. And other than a bit of flat grass, I've left absolutely nothing behind. I'll see you on the walk down. for the night. Let's have one more look around this stunning landscape. There's the lake. That peak there was lit up like Christmas by the moon last night. I don't know if the photos I managed to get make did it any justice at all but Last night was one of the most visually stunning nights of my life. It was absolutely incredible. What a glorious morning. This is what life is about, folks. Get out here. Never mind your cities. Never mind your technology. Forget that. Get out here. Get yourself up a mountain. Get yourself into the wild. This is where we're meant to be. I gotta say, I chickened out of, well, I didn't chicken out. I lazed out of doing the rest of the path up onto the ridge last night. I do apologize. To be honest with you, once I got the camp set up, I was so content, got comfortable, got some food on. I just didn't feel like moving again. But there is definitely a south facing ridge up there. I know there is because I've been to that ridge a little bit lower down where I told you about taking those Milky Way photos where I decided to get started with Astro uh, with wild camping. So I know there's a south facing slope there. But anyway, the map doesn't lie. When we get back to the car, I'll pop the map out again. I'll show you exactly what we've done, where we've been, what we've seen. And then we'll call it a day for another wild camp. As always, Snowdonia has been absolutely epic. I absolutely love it here. There are no words that really do justice to what Snowdonia is and means to people like me and you if you're watching this. I'm sorry I had a moan about that litter and the people with their fire. 
but it is a nature reserve you know it is it is a privilege to be able to walk into a landscape like this and it is our absolute duty to leave it as we find it or better than we find it leave no trace guys it means more than just that'll do It's an active thing that you have to do throughout your entire time in the landscape. Even fruit peelings, they don't biodegrade as quickly as some people think. You know, apple cores, banana skins, orange peel in particular, God, it takes forever to rot away. And a fire pit, well, there's people in, uh, people in the groups that I'm on that will back me up on this, but fire pits take 10 years or more to heal. 10 years for something that you've enjoyed for a couple of hours. It's not okay. It's not okay, folks. And the people that go, oh, lots of people have done it before. So what? Does that make it okay? I'm sure your mum used to say to you something along the lines of, oh, if your mate jumped off a bridge, would you follow him? You know, it doesn't make it okay that it's been done before. Anyway, I've got off track. I was saying lovely things about Snowdonia. For me, it's the best. It's the best. Not only is it accessible within three or four hours for everyone in the UK, but the mountains are so accessible. It's so inviting. So don't get me wrong. Look, Scotland is incredible. It is epic. It is absolutely mind blowing, but it's huge. And the mountains are so intimidating Snowdonia is welcoming you look at it and you think yeah I can do that and then you do it and you end up with an experience like this last night was in terms of the overall experience just the most fabulous night of photography and camping I've had so far. The photos might not be the greatest. But I had the greatest experience taking them. The moon was absolutely incredible. I've never seen anything like it. It was like someone had switched a white light on. Now. Lots of people on their way up this morning, that's good to see. If any of the people I've passed is you watching this video, hope you had a great day.
bottom gate, ladies and gentlemen. Morning. So we're back at the car. We're back at the car. Um, exactly as planned. Very, very successful trip. Parked here, followed the Minfoot path through the forest, along the plateau, and then forked off to Lin Cow, where we saw this fantastic section of flatland here and eventually camped right on the corner just there okay we saw people going up this path here up onto the ridge there was even some people camping just here I could see their lights overnight and then there is this huge south facing slope that they will have had a fantastic view to the south it wasn't necessary last night because that's the way the moon was would never ever have got the Milky Way at all but um, thank you very much to Kader Idris and Lin Cow for an absolutely fantastic trip and that's another one done folks okay thank you so much for coming along with me on this one i hope you enjoyed it i did i've had an incredible time and um, for now all that remains is for me to say if you enjoyed what you saw in this video please hit that subscribe button like leave me a comment below i love reading them um, if you don't feel you can hit the like button or if you actively dislike it and want to hit that thumbs down, tell me why. Please tell me why. Um, you know, it means a lot to me that I'm able to improve these things and hopefully please a lot more of you guys uh, with what I'm bringing to you. Um, but for now, thanks again. This is Richie for Wild Astro signing off.